scripture that is uh, shared today, that song is shared from Becky with her father in her heart as well, who served as a veteran and uh, has gone on to be with the Lord. We also want to remember another very special veteran who is not able to be with us today, and that is Avery Palmer, uh, who is very, very uh, ill and uh, a special part of our church family. We want to lift him up also great for me and Miss Virginia right now. All right, I guess you notice it's time for the children to go out. And, and uh, so uh, we uh, it'd be great to have those little ones in here with us and uh, part of, of what we're doing here. Um, I, I, I had a sermon prepared uh, that uh, kind of went right along with what we, I preached about last week. And during the night last night, I just couldn't sleep. And I, I felt that... I needed to just take a moment before we have the Lord's Supper and a little bit of a different direction. Um, and I, I think uh, a passage of scripture that we're all very familiar with from Psalm 23, and I think it's going to be on our screen here. And I'm just going to ask you to read with me uh, as we go through. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd. Read aloud with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This psalm, I think, has probably meant a lot to many of us in this room through, through our lives. I was blessed as a child to be in a, um, we didn't call it Bible drill, then we call it, called it sword, sword drill, sword drill. All right, I'll say that right. A, a sword drill, uh, and uh, and it was just you know you draw your sword. That the word of God is the sword. It is is our sword, and, and we uh, learned Psalm 23, uh, and uh, it stuck with me all of these years and through my life. It has been a tremendous source of comfort. And I just want to, us to point out a couple of things about this psalm before we share in the Lord's Supper. And the first one is just how intensely personal this psalm is. The Lord is my shepherd. And notice all the, per the pronouns, the personal pronouns here. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He, in the presence of my enemies, how intensely personal this psalm is. One of the things that I think sometimes gets lost on us about our God is, is how He is able in, in His omnipresence and omniscience. Omnipresence meaning being in all places at all times and omniscience in that He knows all things. He sees and knows all things. And the amazing thing that, that should not be lost on us today is that He sees the big picture of our world today. He sees where our world is going. There is, you know, that it is not the circle of life. You know, that, that, that it, is, it is not, that it is, it is a, our, our history is linear and it's going somewhere. And, and our, the Word of God helps us to understand that it's going somewhere, where it's going. It came from Him and it's going toward Him. And He is at every point in between over all things. But at the same time, how intensely personal He is. That He sees every one of us in this room. He sees the big picture. But He sees every, every person here. That not a sparrow falls to the ground, that he is not aware of that. That the, the scripture tells us that he that the, the, the number of hairs on our heads are, are known, that, that he knows, he knows. He knows everything about your life right now. He knows the, the good, the bad, the ugly, right? He knows all, all of that. And 
and he is able he is able to see and minister to every single one of us every person in this room today i want you to, to think about how intensely personal this is the lord is my shepherd and we hunger for this don't we i mean don't we hunger to to know that we are known that that there's something more about our lives than just the than, than just the getting up and the going through the motions every day and lying lie down and then getting up and going the next day. That there's a purpose in all of this and that we're heading somewhere. Don't we long for this? But at the same time, I think there's a part of us that maybe doesn't long for this because the fact that He knows us means He saw everything. He sees it all. The things that we thought maybe we that, that, he, that he missed, he, he saw he saw that too. But aren't you aren't you thankful that he is gracious and good, and that those who come to him do not have to cower in fear, but can come and be welcome, welcome into his presence. The Lord is my shepherd today. You know, I, I, I remember one of my theology professors talking about the presence of God and how sometimes we don't really want, we, we kind of wish God would turn His head for just a few minutes. Just, just a few minutes. Or we hope maybe He missed that. Or He didn't really know that thought. He didn't see that deed or He didn't hear that word. But, but my theology professor put it this way. He said it's sort of like lying down at night and you know your head's on the pillow and sometimes you hear your heartbeat and you kind of wish you didn't hear it because it kind of disturbs you but you don't want it to stop. <laughs> and, and, and isn't that true? I mean, we don't, want, we don't want it to go away. And aren't you thankful that He doesn't have to go away for us to be pardoned? That in fact, He's come to us and pardoned us from our sin. And He, and he sees everything about your life today. But, he, but, but again, with, with all of that, his, his grace is shed abroad on our lives for every one of us. Look at how intensely personal this is. But also look at how intensely prayerful it is. You are with me says, the psalmist says, you are with me. We, that, that we grow closer in those times of, of, of struggle, in those difficult times in our lives, that the Lord is with us, that He sees us and, and He is with us. But also how intensely comforting this psalm is. Someone here today is wondering if the Lord will truly provide. Psalm 23 says to us, that, that, it, 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 he will, that, that He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. That as the Apostle Paul said, that, that I do not have to be afraid, that I can be content today because I know that my God will supply all of my need according to His riches and glory. Somebody here is wondering if the Lord will truly provide but isn't it good to be able to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Someone here today is wondering if, if God really sees your need and He cares about you. And aren't you thankful today that we can say that our God is compassionate and that He sees our needs. Somebody here today is wondering if the Lord will walk through the dark valleys with you. But aren't you glad to know that our God is strong and he is with us the shepherd leads us through the dark valleys but there's not that the, the dark valleys are not purposeless he is leading us through the dark valleys to get us to a better place right and even the difficulties that you're going through right now in your life someone here today is wondering does the lord walk with me through the dark valleys but i, I think all around you you'll find people who will share with you 
that I went through this and God saw me through. My God saw me through. I went through this and my God was with me. My God strengthened me. My God helped me through that. And testimonies all around this room and all down through history of those who put their trust in Him that He will go with us even when we walk through the darkest of valleys. And I want you to notice too how intensely trusting this psalm is. How intensely trusting. All the way through it. Everything about it is about trust. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me through paths of righteousness for His name's sake. And then He changes from just talking about the Lord to talking to the Lord. Even though I may walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not be afraid. For you, Lord, are with me. Your rod and your staff will comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I want you to know today, too, that this is a psalm for believers. Because this one who's being spoken of here is the Good Shepherd. Jesus said, I am the Good Shepherd of the sheep. He sees the needs of His sheep. And, and, what, and, and, and we, those who belong to Him, the Scripture tells us that He speaks and we hear His voice and we know Him. Those who belong to Him know Him. They know His voice, Jesus said. Just as the Father knows me, and, and, and I know the Father, Jesus said. And then He said these amazing words, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I lay down my life for the sheep. The thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. Jesus said, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Today as we share in the Lord's Supper, I want to remind you of that one who laid down his life for you. If you have not put your trust in Jesus Christ, if you have not submitted your life to him, Today, I would encourage you right now, even as I speak, that you would bow your head and repent of your sin and turn away from your sin. He sees and He, he knows your sin and He died for your sin, your specific sins He died for and for the sins of the whole world. Right now, would you just, before God, just bow your head. Lord, I repent of my sin. I turn away from my sin. And I turn to You, Lord. I turn to You, trusting You, asking You to forgive me of my sin, asking You to restore me, asking You to, to, to save me from my sin. And today, right now, I put my trust in You. I wonder if there's someone in this room today, that before we go to the Lord and, and, and before we have the Lord's Supper, I wonder if there's someone who just needs a special word of prayer right now. Would you lift your hand? It's okay. I mean, just lift your hand and, and everybody around that person, will you pay special attention and will you gather around that person as we pray? We're going to share in the Lord's Supper and we're going to celebrate this one who is our shepherd uh, in just a moment. Right now, raise your hand if you, if you just need a special word of prayer. Anyone across the room, you, you have someone in your family, someone in your life, it's okay. Listen, you, uh, to have a need, but lift your hand. Someone else? Okay. All right, would, would those of you close by, that individual, come alongside them, just lay a hand on them and pray for them right now. As we pray, let's continue to remember uh, as Betty McCall's family, as Betty is called in hospice, Said she's just going to be on this side for a few days. She's getting ready to go and be with the Lord. Pray for Avery and Virginia Palmer. Pray for Raymond Robbins and his family. Pray for Phyllis and Marvin Loveday. 
pray for the family of Ms. Kate and Sarah and all of us who grieved her death. Let's go to the Lord right now. Lord, we, we just give this time to you and ask you, Lord, to minister to each person who has a special need in their life right now. And we pray, Lord, that you will remind us that you are our shepherd today. Our good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. I pray that this would be a time just of renewing and refreshing our faith, encouraging us as we come together to the table to celebrate what you have done for us in laying down your life for each one of us and for all of us. Lord, I pray for these that we mentioned today, these who have lost loved ones. I pray for our entire church family today. I pray that you will help us to truly be home to each other. But not just to each other, but to this entire community. That, Lord, you would increase our capacity and our ability to reach out in this community and help the community around us to come to know this one of whom we speak when we say, the Lord is my shepherd. Thank you again, Lord, that you are sufficient for every need. And thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And as we receive the bread today, it is a reminder that you suffered bodily, intensely in your body <coughs> for us. And as we receive the juice, Lord, that it would be a reminder to us that you shed your blood for our sins, that we might saved. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We have a group that's going to come and lead us in a song just as you prayerfully listen and also our deacons will come forward as soon as the song is uh, finished. We will, uh, we will share the Lord's song. You know, we have a rich heritage. We have a special gadget for this song. So I'll just speak loud. We have a rich heritage in America, especially in church music. And without going into all details, there's two styles that, uh, interesting enough, we don't even know who wrote the music because they came out of tradition. The early American folk tune, like Amazing Grace, tune is an early American folk tune. And this morning we're going to sing a Negro spiritual, which is another set of music that came, we don't know where. Uh, we don't know who wrote it. And we want to sing this morning this song that we ask that you will uh, identify with us as we sing the various stanzas and particularly the part where it asks God to forgive us of our sins and give it an opportunity to praise Him. <laughs> 